right back inside City Hall. After running a campaign with a repeated emphasis on ending stop and frisk, the stop and frisk era in particular, perhaps Mayor de Blasio's most high-profile appointment was his decision to bring William Bratton back to the NYPD for a second stint as commissioner. But three months after Bratton's return to the department, what has been his impact? Joining me now to help sort it all out are three veteran crime reporters. We've got Juliet Papa from 1010 Wins, DNA Info's criminal justice editor and columnist, Murray Weiss, and New York One's criminal justice reporter, our own Dean Memminger. Good to see everybody. Thanks for coming in. All righty. Um, well, let me start with this, um, this, this news that uh, the commissioner made. Uh, apparently, while talking to uh, someone at another station, yes. uh, he, 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 he got into um, what he thought about his predecessor. And we always knew, we outsiders, you guys I'm sure had heard, all of this that there was maybe no love lost between the two of them maybe a little, a little bit more than a rivalry maybe some actual uh, distemper and he said something about the morale of the department so there are a lot of different aspects to this let's let's listen to it so we know what we're talking about here morale in this organization was awful and uh, the public didn't understand that the politicians didn't understand it but it was a very dispirited organization it was an organization I think that was kind of beat down by several years now, first of all, you guys have been there uh, longer than he has, at least in, the, in recent years. <laughs> in recent years. Is, is that true? Is he right? Well, I mean, this is something that he actually said from day one, and de Blasio said from day one that morale was low because cops were being forced to do stop and frisk when crime was already low. So why keep pushing it? The community starting to hate, or did hate, mm. officers on the beat. Why keep pushing it? So that's what he's talking about. Um, I think officers were concerned. The unions were concerned because they were the ones who had to address this issue. They're doing the stop and frisk. The community doesn't like them. They're pointing at the officer on the street. And then when you talked about all of these new city council bills, they were talking about, and now law that they were talking about perhaps suing mm -hmm. individual officers, which the city council says is not going to happen, but I think the individual officers and unions felt that, you know, they were being pushed as well as the community when it came to stopping Yeah, I think, I think some of this, there was dissension, and I had heard it personally from uh, some union people uh, that there was a dissatisfaction, and now I understand the commissioner is, has them meeting in Police Plaza at the at 1PP and feeling trying to feel to have them be more inclusive. I, he's been making the rounds I believe too Stop at local precincts internally. right and mm -hmm. he is meeting personally with people and getting a sense of of what they're about and what they are and that's when he said too he, he felt like these precinct houses were antiquated and their equipment and technology and you know he's looking to do that so I guess when you're sitting there with your own technology at home and then you're going to the precinct and you'll, you're, you're dealing with things that are 10 15 years old mm -hmm. that could be part of the issue too. Errol, one, there's one other thing in addition to the stop and frisk issue the uh, the public wouldn't see it, but internally, the police the way the police department was managed was in a very heavy-handed way. So, at a time when uh, they're successfully driving crime down to historic levels, um, the the way they were treated by the internal affairs people, the way the department management kind of ruled by fear, that you had people who should have been celebrating their job, that were living in like police nirvana, 300 mm -hmm. homicides versus 2,000. Instead, they're being beaten down to get stop and frisk numbers up. They're getting beaten down to get crime numbers down. And, and as a result of the internal pressure and the management style that started at the top, you had a lot of disaffected people working in an, in, in an organization even beyond the stop and frisk issue. And the public's dislike of the police as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And the politicians beating up on the police. Well, when you say, this is the thing, is when you say the politicians, I mean, nobody beat up uh, more on the last administration and its commissioner uh, than the current mayor, right? I mean, Bill de Blasio, it's not really that much of an exaggeration to say that this issue carried him into City Hall. Mm -hmm. Because the Without Bloomberg question. administration was very data-driven and everybody was on board. And I think Kelly was just following right behind and saying, you want numbers? I'm giving you numbers and I'm going to show you how well I'm going to give you numbers. And, you know, um, uh, Mayor Bloomberg gave him practically carte blanche to, to run the department. Yeah, but it, it, you have to be careful, though, because Bratton does praise Kelly quite often because you, you can't say, oh, he was horrible because the crime numbers are low. But the difference is it's kind of weird in three months, and we know that it's been a cold winter. Mm -hmm. So people are not out. So we're going to see when the spring and summer comes, 
how stop and frisk is really going, how crime numbers are going, but he's coming with this verbal judo, kind of like peaches and cream, mm -hmm. honey and milk, talking mm -hmm. softly, and it seems like it's already working. Everybody's like stop and frisk, you know, doesn't exist well, what, anymore. what has happened? I mean, we, we heard that the mayor had a directive on how he wanted stop and frisk done. Has that translated into the patrol guide and so forth, or is, is it being done differently? I, I think, first of all, stop and frisk has kind of stopped for the most <laughs> part. So, and that might not be the worst thing, because it gives the department a chance to retool the way that department's going to approach the stop and frisk issue. I would think that over time the stop and frisk numbers are going to slowly rise because uh, as Bill Bratton has said and others, it's, it's, part of, it's part of the police universe. It's just a matter of how it's done. And the criticism that was correct is that if, when crime was, you know, cascading downward, why are the stop and frisk numbers going to like exponential uh, sizes? Well, we we so, spoke about this before when we were here last. It's not mm -hmm. just stop and frisk. It is what one police commissioner or chief told me, stop and diss. You know, I grab you and I shove you and I curse you. And it's like, what? whoa. So Bratton has said, you know, these seven principles that he's talking about, you leave each encounter with that person mm -hmm. feeling as good as they possibly can, which should work if they can do it with the 35,000 I mean, police officers. I, I, those, those principles struck me as, you know, almost <laughs> ripe for, you know, comedy treatment, right? <laughs> that the first thing you do is go and introduce yourself and, you know, sort of greet them and ask if they need any services and so forth. And there's some corners in Brooklyn where that could be nothing but hilarious <laughs> and dangerous. Um, do, do we know if this is actually what's going on on the street these days? Well, they say they're supposed to be retraining everybody, and I suspect that's what's been going on. I don't know if there's any big uh, Formal work done with that, but I, I think it's just there's always going to be stop and frisk. I never heard it as that. It's called like probable cause to search somebody. I, I knew this group. Uh, this was years ago in the Bronx. They were called the Bronx Robbery Squad. They were all about getting guns off the streets. And guess what they did? They had to stop people and had reasonable suspicion and stop them to uh, see if they were guns. They've been doing this for years. It's policing. And I think it's how you either rephrase it or recharacterize it or how you are trained to do it. What, what do you think is going to be uh, uh, coming up as so, sort of the big stories? I mean, everybody focuses on stop and frisk. Uh, the commissioner makes a comment like he did over the weekend. Everybody mm -hmm. jumps on that. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are some other issues that we... Can well, I mean, he's brought in a lot of commissioners. He has uh, Deputy Commissioner Tucker, who has come in to head up the police academy, and they're supposed to be opening this summer, a little bit behind schedule, as usually with the, a billion-dollar police academy in Queens mm -hmm. with a new commissioner to oversee training. So that's going to be a big splash. How does that work? Are you really retraining these new people who are coming in? He brought in a lot of new commissioners, deputy commissioners, but he did keep a lot of old uniforms. A lot of chiefs are still there. Chief Banks, Chief Resnick, Chief Patel, Chief Jaffe, Chief Chan. So those people know the department. He doesn't know these guys like the people there. So it's very interesting when he put Resnick head of IAB, he says, well, around here, he is a respected guy. So Bratton had to be listening to the other people in the department saying, this is the guy that you want. Interesting. Well, I think he knows policing, Bill Bratton. You know, he has been the commissioner not just here in two other cities. He's, he's nationally recognized. He's, he's a terrific choice for New York. I think the test for him will actually be keeping the crime at the levels it is, but seeing if in the months ahead the public actually begins to feel that the police department is back to being a service-oriented agency. Because at the core, that's what the police department really is. Yes, they fight crime. It's a dangerous business. But they come and they help you rather than, as Dean is saying, have this, you know, dissing you attitude. Which not only was exterior, to go back to my point before, that was the attitude interior. That mm -hmm. The management people treated their own people that way. And I've seen lots of terrific, terrific uh, police personnel leave because okay. they, they, they had enough of it. That is going to be the last word. Murray Weiss, Juliet Pompa, Dean Memmerger. Already? Very good to Done. see you. <laughs> we'll do it again real soon. Right now, though, we're going to take a short break. Coming up, we'll break down the winners and losers in the state budget deal when I'll be joined by the four members of our Consultants Corner. We're back in a minute.